What's up everybody and welcome to part two of my Git tutorial series. In the previous video, we have, uh, we have learned about the key concepts that you should probably know about when working with Git. And now in this video, we're gonna see how we can use Git to inspect the commit history of an already existing project. So if you haven't downloaded yet, uh, if you haven't downloaded Git yet, then you can go to the Git website and then simply download it for your a respective operating system and then when you've done that let's open up uh, git bash which is included in the download for windows and if you are on linux or mac os then you can use the terminal so let's first check if git is working properly uh, properly therefore we simply type git and then press uh, enter and this will then list a bunch of available commands together with a short uh, explanation of those commands. And if you want to know more about them, you can uh, simply type in the command with uh, the help option. So let's look at this git init command. So let's say git init and then dash dash help. If you run this, then this will automatically open uh, the manual page for this command. And if you want to have a more concise uh, information, then you can use the short form of this option here, of this help option, which is simply dash h. This will then give you some information right in uh, the command line. And then uh, one thing that we can also do is check uh, what version we are currently having of uh, git. Therefore, we simply say git dash dash version. And as you can see, I'm on version uh, 2.24.1 for Windows. So that was a short uh, introduction how to interact with Git. And now uh, let's see what the commit history of an, uh, of, a, of an already existing project actually looks like. Therefore, we're gonna download this project here from my GitHub account, which is a Git tutorial. And this project is a command line based tic-tac-toe game. So to download that, you can click here this green button and then uh, copy uh, this URL here. And now, and now we can use uh, Git uh, to download this uh, project. Uh, therefore, let's first go to the desktop. And now uh, to download the project, we're gonna learn about the first command and which is uh, git clone and to that we simply uh, to that we simply pass the url of the project so if you now run this then this will then download the project to our desktop here so let's open up this folder and here we can see that there is a readme two python files one is called helper functions the other is called game then a dot git ignore file and then two folders which one, uh, one of which is supporting materials and the other is dot git and during the tutorial, during the tutorial, we will see what all those things are. But now let's first just have a look at the game itself. So we're gonna run this game uh, file. So we're gonna say Python game dot pi, and it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Okay, obviously. Obviously, we have to first uh, go into uh, the folder. Okay, so again, let's run the file. And here now we are first asked uh, how many rows or columns we want to have. So let's stick with the classic size of three. Then here the game board is printed and then player X is asked uh, which position he or she wants to play. So let's uh, play position zero, zero. Now the X is depicted at this position and then player always ask uh, which position he or she wants to play. So let's play position one, one. And then we have this red O here at position one, one. So now let's finish up this game by achieving a win for X, uh, for a horizontal win here for X. So let's uh, play position zero, one. And let's just play for O position 2, 2, and now finally 
position 0, 2. So now there are three X's in a row and the game is finished and player X has achieved a horizontal win. And then we are asked if we want to play again or not. And we're going to say no. So that is what uh, the game looks like. And the code for the game is based on a tutorial by uh, Zentex. So it's this uh, Python tutorial. So if you want to know more about how the co code actually works, you can check out this tutorial. I only have uh, slightly adjusted the code to suit uh, my purposes for this video series. Okay, so now that we have seen what the project actually actually looks like, let's have a look at its commit history. And therefore, we're going to need another command, which is simply git log. So here, each block that you can see here is one commit. And the most recent one is depicted at the top. And uh, what you can see here is uh, the hash of the commit. After that, then who the creator of the commit was, the timestamp, and then the commit message. And what you can also see here is uh, the master branch. So the master branch is currently at this most recent commit and head is pointing at the master branch. And here we then have from the remote repository, we have the master branch and <coughs> the head branch as well. So if we then here scroll down, we can see that there are or that there is a colon at the end of the line, which means that there are even more commits and we can uh, go through them uh, by pressing the down key. So there, thereby then we expose one uh, line at a time or we can also press the space bar to ex uh, expose several lines. So if we press that a couple of times, then we uh, reach the end here. And then to access the log, we can press Q. So this is what uh, the log history looks like. And since that is a little bit difficult to get an overview of the project, we can use another option of the git log command, which is uh, dash dash uh, one line. So this will then depict the commits in just one line. And then here we have an abbreviated version of, of the hash and then here the commit message. And then uh, as well, uh, the branches and the head. Okay, so that's <clears throat> how we can uh, look at the history of the project. Now let's see how we can traverse, uh, traverse that commit history. So how we can revert the project back to a different commit. Therefore, uh, we need the command git checkout. And this will then move, uh, with that we can move the head around. And we're going to check out this commit here, merge valid. Uh, merge, merge valid move. So therefore we need uh, this hash here. So now if I run this command, then the project will be reverted back to that commit. So the files in the folder uh, are going to look like again, what they looked like when this commit was created. And what I want to do here is look at this uh, supporting materials folder when I now run this uh, command, namely now this uh, folder disappeared. And that's because apparently uh, at this commit here, merge valid move, uh, the supporting materials folder wasn't yet in our project. And as you can see here in the messages, it was actually added only at the most recent commit. So that's why it's not in our folder anymore. And here in uh, this output here, it also says that we are in detached head state. And that's because uh, the head is now po not pointing at a branch, but directly at a commit. So let's run git log again. <clears throat> and here you can see that head now is at this particular commit. But what you can also see is now uh, that the commits that come after that commit here, they aren't depicted uh, anymore. So, and, and that's because by default, uh, git log only shows the commits that are reachable from the currently uh, checked out commit. So since the ones that come after that aren't reachable from this commit here, git log doesn't show them. But we can uh, show them by using another option, which is dash dash all. 
This allows then us to see again all the commits uh, that are potentially reachable from uh, from the one that is most recent. Okay, so that's uh, how we can traverse the history and revert the project back to a different commit. Okay, so now let's check how we can see what the actual differences are between commits. So what uh, changes were introduced in the files between one commit and the other. And the commits that we are going to compare are those two. And if we just look at commit messages, that you can then you can see that after the currently checked out commit, so this one, it uh, the commit message says name players X and O instead of one and two. So that should mean that at the currently checked out commit, the players should still be called one and two. So let's see if that's the case. So let's run uh, the game fire again. So if I can give it a pie. And let's pick again three rows. And here you can see we have now zeros and uh, these brackets. And then player one is asked which position uh, to play. And here then player two is asked. So uh, it's really the case that players are still call, uh, now called one and two and not X and O anymore. So let's interrupt this game. And now let's print out the log again. So now let's see uh, what the actual differences are in the code so that we can use uh, players, uh, they can name players X and O instead of one and two. Therefore, we need the next command, which is git diff. And to that, you simply pass the hashes of, of the commits that you want to compare. So we want to compare this commit with that one. And then if I run this, then here in the bright white color, you can see that there are uh, two changes. One was made in game.py and the other was made in helper functions.py. So let's lo first look at the change in game.py. And here, uh, generally uh, with the git diff statement uh, command, uh, it's depicted uh, the lines that are, were deleted are depicted in red and the lines that were added are depicted in green. So here basically the only change is that the players here are called X and O uh, with strings X and O instead of these uh, integers one and two. So then let's scroll down to the helper functions uh, dot pi file change. And here you can see there's again a colon. So let's pre press uh, the space bar to see the rest of that. And here are the changes where that some print statement was added at the beginning of the file. And then here in the create initial game board function, this line here, print row index, comma row was uh, deleted. And then here some code that was added. And then here at the end it says print row index, comma colored row. So this code is then apparently uh, there to have the colored X and O. So this is how you can use the git diff command to see what the actual uh, differences are in the code. So let's uh, exit this with Q. And now let's print the log again. And now finally, let's revert the project back to the most recent commit. So we're going to say git checkout, but this time we're not going to check out the commit with the hash, but we're going to use directly the branch because that is at the most uh, recent commits. So we're going to say git checkout master. And this now, well, let's run the log again. So now the head is again pointing at master. So the project is currently again in the state of the most recent commit. And that's why here the supporting materials folder is uh, there again. So that concludes uh, this video. And now we have seen how we can inspect uh, the commit history of an already existing project. And the commands that we have used are those ones here. So now uh, in the next video, we're going to see how we can create such a commit history in the first place. So how we can create commits. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.